Hey everybody, the Mature Simmer here. Welcome back to Farmers Only Club as I sit here and start up another year. So going ahead and getting cotton in the ground. The AI helper that is uh, chewing up some of my funds is over there. It's the typical process I do where uh, I've got the weeder running behind me as quickly as possible because otherwise uh, it just takes far, far too long. Uh, trying to do some stuff manually here today for first time in a while, frankly, but I do need to save some cash and do need to get going. Uh, and I suppose there's a bit of an ulterior motive in that given all the conversation I've had with Farming Simulator 25 and all that recently, uh, just trying to determine where my feelings are and so one of the things is definitely, yeah, let's spend some time in here and see if I'm like, oh, I really would rather be doing something else or whatever. So there is a little bit of that, but um, some of that is coming from the fact that the single player series, um, which is Hills of Tuscany, if you followed that at all, I'm sure you've noticed there's been no episode for a long, long time. It's just taking a lot of time to make enough progress to not just give an episode of, you know, give you two episodes of I'm planting fields and I'm harvesting, which, as I've said in that series, um, you know, if you want I'm planting fields and I'm harvesting, uh, that's kind of what you can get here because that's that's what I'm doing so um, so it's not that I'm not uh, th that I've stopped that series or something has happened it's just become difficult I did dance around the possibility with some of the large maps that came out recently Alma Missouri and Hubbard Nebraska especially would be Hubbard being a 16x and so forth it's like do I move my mega VIP series over there and um, do that, but that was once again, I very quickly was like, man, I'm just looking for the fact that it's a new map, but it's not as if, um, Green Valley, I think, is what I have the Mega Series on, and the Mega Series, again, wasn't getting a lot of movement because it's just dozens of hours of work to get, like, a half hour or a 40 minute episode out because I just need to run course play forever and let things go. And now that I'm doing things like um, Flight Simulator, usually it's like, well, if I'm going to have something run in the background, I'm usually having a plane fly for four hours or something, and that used to be Farming Simulator time. So there is a, a, a bit of that going on. Um, so I'm just you know kind of sharing where my head's at. But it was getting really easy to just kind of write this off and start it up. But it still chews up time. So um just felt like, you know, part of the reason I may be struggling is that I'm just... It takes so long to make money if I'm constantly using AI. I mean, it's hard enough to make money as it is without the AI. But uh, having the helpers run pretty much everything obviously costs more than me doing some things manually. I mean, again, the harvest, I've already said, the harvest is just so involved and so time-consuming. I know that's AI, but I was normally doing the planting and the fertilizing. You know, I've still done the, fer whoop, I've still done the fertilizing wrong key. I hit the V key as I ran in there. Hopefully it won't come off the line. It did not. All right, it's the B key. But anyway, um, other than trying to get things moving and get to the point where I determine if I have another field that I'm going to use, it's kind of the same thing. Let me check the status of the cotton. So if I'm here in my spinnery, all right, I still have 74,000. When I was in here last night, I uh, was getting down to 90, so it's really only done about 20,000. So it's doing, say... 20 to 40,000 liters, um, once well, doing maybe 40,000 liters in a day. So that's something to keep in mind about whether I do, in fact, want to grab 38 when I have enough, because 38 is bigger. 
Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I could get 140, 160, maybe even 180 off of that. So if I do 40,000 a day, let's say I do 160 on that field, that's basically four days. So if I take more than eight days to do everything, which I, I'm in potential danger of doing that, because I'd have to go back. I'm not sure if I got things into the spinnery in uh, December or not, or if it was earlier than that. But if I did it in December and still have 90,000 left at the end of April, um, you know, maybe that's not too bad. But if I got it in in October and things were running pretty solidly, that's a very different story. But that is the situation I have right now. Uh, any comments or questions, uh, any feedback, always, always welcome. Um, honestly, I'm not sure how many folks even pay attention to this series. It doesn't get a ton of views, I'll be honest. So uh, that's been part of the challenge. I think I get maybe 10 or 15 people. Um, or 10 or 15 views, so I don't even know if that's people, because I know just when I was doing things on my own and checking out my own videos here and there, like coming in three times at three different times, it views that as three different views, even though I'm the same person going in and maybe picking up where I was or something. So it can be a little misleading. But I was a little worried because the weeder was almost as wide as this, and how long this field was I'm like wow am I gonna ever get really ahead of him but it looks like I've I've kept up and done pretty well so pretty happy with how things are going but uh, yeah that's the situation um, so I will be back when we're on to the next item for the year or as always if uh, anything comes up I should have enough supplies I uh, looked at the solid fertilizer, looked at the seeds. I've got like uh, tens of thousands of each of those. And I'm not quite taking, you know, I might take 10,000 of something, like seeds or whatever, certainly. But I've got like f almost uh, 40,000, 50,000 in seeds between what I've already put in the ground and so forth. So I don't think I'm going to have to buy anything. So I should be able to make everything I need to this year without additional investment. So it's just going to be the workers, and then everything else will just uh, be profit. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, I am back in here to try to get fertilization done. Uh, definitely probably the latest I've been in any of this time that I've been on FOC. But uh should be okay. You've also noticed um, I've decided I'm not using that many pieces of equipment and just trying to keep parking them in um, just ends up kind of chewing up some time. Also interesting that I, I think, I don't know why don't I have any fertilizer, oh that's right because I lime the field. So I did like end up throwing it all back in because I limed two of the fields in the off season. I'm like, why do I not have any fertilizer? Because even in, in some of those cases, I'll just empty things. But I think I had refilled and had like 10,000 and it was just a lot. So anyway, um, let me get over here. All right, why is it really trigger points on these are so small like they seem to like I have to be touching the icon is what it seems like all right 25,000 I think I'll be okay I think I, I use less than 10 for oh well let me uh reset the limit and obviously then get everything filled But yeah, obviously if I can avoid, for some reason it feels like I lost money. I see, that was the wage payment for the, the uh, weeder. 
and getting that done. But, um, yeah, just working on all the other sim stuff. A lot of, uh, you know, did a lot of flying for trying to get a time limited um, thing done in one of my VAs that I only had 90 days, and it was like, eh, I'm close enough that I'm going to just go ahead and kind of press on. I'm not sure if I'm at the right angle here. I guess we'll find out, right? It appears to be okay, but it's hard to tell. I mean, I think what I'll need to do is put it against the edge of the field so that when I get over there, yeah, it does appear to be lined up because I still have to stick it out a little bit because of that tiny nub at the end here. Um, so that always moves it a bit. Although, hmm, looks like I have the nub in play, so I don't need to move it anymore. Alright, the good news is, yes, I can see it getting darker. But we can also go here and make sure... Oh, interesting. No, never mind. Somehow it looked like they were darker when I when they were at the bottom of the screen, but that was just an optical illusion, so. But yeah, uh, there was in an American virtual that I'm in, uh, it basically, there was something called, they, they don't call them tours in that, they call them adventures, uh, but they really, they only have five. So uh, I was looking at Walker Air Transport and some of the conversations I was having because there was also a discussion, I think in that same VA, um, some new pilots started asking about landing rate and so forth. And uh, one of the guys that kind of runs the VA or is in, in high leadership and is on all the time, he used to be a real world pilot um, he's not any longer, I, I think it says he's an entrepreneur, so forth, but um, he addressed the point that there is this kind of fallacy in flight sim of, you know, the, the closer, the lower you get in feet per minute, the better, but the issue is that for commercial airlines like American United and all those that we do in a lot of the virtual airlines that exist, um, there are sensors in the landing gear that you have to hit with enough force to deploy systems automatically like speed brakes and and things like that to help with slowing the plane down on landing so that if you land too gently those don't trigger and in essence it, it's worse and then they also talked about you know the endless floating over the runway that tends to occur and so that instead of you know landing what would be considered kind of more properly in the real world of you know near the touchdown points and so forth that people come in but then to grease the landing they float above the runway and you know slow down and, and flare and then just float and, and drop down like a feather but then they're losing thousands of feet in doing that and that that obviously you know in, in any scenario creates more risk because you've got less runway to stop and then it also creates the situation that those brakes haven't gone off or, or those automatic stopping things haven't gone off and then you're burning more brakes and putting more strain on equipment and so forth so that it really should be higher up and they said you know in the real world like pilots don't even talk about vertical speed and and you know how heavy you land like it it becomes the old um you know i think one of the pilots that, that got into the discussion was kind of like you know they started with the cliche that any landing you can walk away from is a good landing and they added the piece that if you can use the plane the next day it's an outstanding landing um <laughs> 
you know so basically you didn't damage any equipment or anything so it's kind of more not only is it a good landing but if you even though it's hard by certainly flight sim standards it doesn't really matter as long as you haven't damaged the gear or anything like that and then uh, you know someone posted an article that had, I don't know if they had written or someone had written that kind of went into that and explained once again how it's this uh, just fallacy in the flight sim community that hey the closer you get to zero the better so we were talking about you know that but the, all airlines seem to score that way or most of them and I remember that Walker uh, did differentiate there because they've kind of got this target of 150 which still is a little soft I think according to what these guys were were talking about they said it, like 200 250 should really be the target um, because that's usually about when you can be certain that all those systems would deploy on, on any aircraft that you'd be using and um, you know so it, it, and, and the nice thing with Walker is they also have different scores depending on how what the gross weight for the uh, the airplane is so for lighter planes it is okay to land softer and actually you get the, a higher score that way but basically anything heavier so certainly the 737s the, the big airliners and so forth would fall into that uh, you actually do worse on softer landings as far as the reward you get than you would if you landed um, you know basically the only time you get a worse score than that uh, where where it's not better to land is once you exceed 400 feet per minute so definitely kind of more in line with what we were talking about and you know kind of when I posted that so that's where I was going into to look at Walker and and stuff like that and um, you know share that information with the American folks and you know I kind of got a hundred percent or thumbs up or something from from those pilots like yeah this is better because someone else had posted something like yeah here you know they do this here and they're like yeah but they're still rewarding the gentle landing you know because the initial chart was that same thing like it it got um you know it, it decreased the the more the harder you landed but not quite as much or something i don't remember um so in any event i was trying to then get that virtual adventure done which is kind of the one you need to then do any others but you know honest honesty i guess i don't know yeah in all honesty i looked at what else they had after that because basically it was a what they called a welcome back adventure where you in essence had 10 flights so that you kind of flew around the u.s and uh at the various airports American would kind of have as, as key hubs I think and basically just made a circle and started in uh, LAX and ended in LAX and then that unlocked your ability to go into any of the other tours uh, where Walker has some of that um, where there's tours that kind of are meant to build on each other so I think it's like extreme airports one and then to do extreme airports two you need to have completed extreme airports one but those are kind of the only dependencies where in this case it's like you couldn't do anything unless you you did that but as I look at the others um, they're just based around a for the uh, almost a hundred percent around an aircraft type um, I guess there's one called Northwest Adventures that basically you're, it looks like for in all intents and purposes you'd consider yourself as a pilot based out of Seattle. And so you're either doing a, a leg out, leg back, or I think the first leg is um, like a three 
leg where you go up to Alaska. I think you go up to Anchorage, and then you go from Anchorage to Juneau, and then from Juneau back to Seattle. But other than that, you're you're just going out and back, and I think that one might have 12 legs. And then there's another one that basically spells out, you know, I think it's like spelling out AAVA, which are the initials, you know, American Airlines Virtual Airline. And they just kind of do the pattern where you're spelling that out on the map. And I don't know how many they had, but, you know, but other than that, it's like, oh, it's the 319, or they just introduced a new one for the 737, which is kind of what got me interested. Like, oh, maybe I... I want to focus on on getting this, um, you know, kind of taken care of, so I can do these other adventures. But I think the Walker ones are far better put together and more interesting. So, uh, in Walker, I found out had uh, 75 because I was basically in the landing rate discussion. Um, I went to see because I said, well. The challenge is, like, because even in our virtual airline, we reward the, the, you know, closest to zero. And so kind of my point was, well, if we're all saying this, like, and this airline is very much about trying to pr promote as much realism as possible without taking it, you know, over the top. Because uh, I think I have mentioned that I'm one of the VAs I'm in is very, very strict. Um you know to the point that it it is kind of a turn off for me cuz i'm just not that into all that that piece of it i'd rather just kind of enjoy things and sure let me know what thing what things i should be doing but don't like force me to do things but anyway um i, I was saying you know well what if we then change the scoring or is that like are the web pages kind of, you know, things that maybe all virtual airlines are using uh, a similar system, and basically the system's just built that way, and it'd be too hard to change the code and, and so forth. I mean, again, I've done enough website development that I think that's unlikely. Like, it's it's still just basic HTML, you know, when you get down to it. I mean, yes, you can use other languages and scripting languages and stuff to do certain things but um, you know it should be doable to say let's pick a number let's pick 200 and then basically um, you know the closer people are to 200 the better they get then you know we could even basically ignore anything under 200 and say no nope, it's too soft it's terrible you didn't deploy your automatic systems and so that would be a bad landing or you know just go ahead and say hey the closer you are to 200 but the target just becomes different as opposed to zero and so yes in theory if you landed at negative 180 and negative 220 you'd be the same because you're 20 away from that target either way but um so We'll see, and and so they said there's some discussion going on and so forth, but um, but in that process, because I was looking to see, and Walker does score a little bit differently in that really, uh, the only landing information they have, I think, in the statistics was how close you were to the 150, and then the pilots that hit 150. Now I will say, uh, you know, having tried it to some degree. Um, I think I got close. I think I've gotten like 149, 148 a few times. Um, I am surprised how many 150s there are. Like literally, I think they show the top, I don't think it's quite the top 10. But um, in any event, it goes back like six days and then that list is full. Of, so there's that many that are landing at 150, which is kind of nuts. Now, on the other hand, the one thing I have noticed, for example, is in the American virtual, you know, every virtual airline has these dashboards that basically give you statistics, and one of the common ones is how many active live flights are occurring at that moment when you are looking at that dashboard. 
Um, I don't know that I've seen American Virtual get above 50. I mean, it, it's sometimes, it's basically the low 40s um, is pretty much the highest. Like, I see it at 42 once in a while. I think I may have seen it at 46, where it's not uncommon for Walker that we're over 100. Um, I think just the other day I saw 117. So... Um, you know, and I think it's just that testament to how many people find one interesting versus the other and actually participate in it. And, and mine's kind of the same. I by far fly more in Walker. Um, I've, I think I'm up at 130 flights that I've recorded. Um, and I have probably barely a dozen in any of the other VAs. So if I'm going to fly in a way that is, is counted or scored or tracked or whatever you want to call it, I, I default to Walker a lot. And yes, I did find in the statistics, they actually do let you break up your flights and, and they report on how many are in each category. And yes, I, as you would expect, my tours, I think of those 133, 123 were, were tours. So, um, and it's just, you know, because they're enjoyable to follow along and it, it's nice to see the progress and, and so forth. So, anyway, so that is the situation of the things that made me late here into Farming Simulator. was really focusing on that because at one point I had to redo, so I did have uh, a heart attack moment, I guess if you want to call it that, and in the end, once I think I deduced what may have happened, I think it was my fault, and I created a problem, so um, I went ahead, there was a update I heard about recently, I don't know, I, w I want to hesitate saying anything's new, because I don't want people yelling at me and so forth that I'm wrong uh, when I don't need to be. Um, but it's new to me in that I, I just saw it talked about, but there were like a bunch of folks that just seemed to be reviewing it on YouTube and so forth. And it might be that they updated or came out with a, a new version of it. But from Orbix, um, they have this thing called Global Trees HD, which replaces pretty much all the vegetation globally. Uh, and so you can do it, uh, in essence, kind of like a seasons thing where... You know, it's summer, winter, you know, so summer in the northern hemisphere, winter in the in the southern, you know, you can flip it, obviously, um, you know, because the default in Microsoft Flight Simulator is everything's just summer. So things are always green and lush and and everything's great. Um, and then, you, you know, it also lets you pick from like six different grass types that you can use to replace the default. And, uh, you know, so I'm just experimenting with that. Well, I was flying a long leg of that American virtual thing. Uh, it was like a four-hour flight from O'Hare to Seattle. And I was like halfway, so like a couple hours in. And I saw this, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, in the process of downloading it and then kind of looking at it inadvertently because it's it's runs a different way... Um, you know, and basically, I think what it was is there was a uh, a launch thing, and then I didn't realize when you shifted and picked and applied changes, it didn't occur to me exactly how this worked, but what it does is it creates folders in basically the mod directory, would would be similar to what we'd be talking about here in Farming Simulator, and... And then, I guess, Microsoft Flight Simulator, as opposed to just, hey, I looked at the mod directory uh, once I started, it may be impacted, or it may see it, because uh, someone suggested when I shared what had happened, because I was asking for help, um, that, well, maybe the XML files or something got updated, and so basically it crashed a desktop. So I lost my flight, but then the bigger problem was not that it just didn't crash. Like, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator then wouldn't start. Uh, it was just hung for 
I think at one point I left it for like 15 minutes, and while Microsoft Flight Simulator takes a while to load, it's never anywhere near that long. It's maybe half that time, in the worst case, on my hardware. Um, and so I was, the heart attack moment was like, oh my god, I, just to get some trees, I may have just totally screwed my entire installation of Microsoft Flight Simulator and how long and whatever is it going to take me to rebuild and so forth. Um, and ultimately I was able to find a way by uh, renaming my community folder, which is the, the mods folder in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and then it started at that point, and then I just basically kept adding uh, 20 or so things in, because I have like, a, I think I determined in that process I have like 113 um, folders, which means I have like 113 different mods and stuff that are are available in Microsoft Flight Simulator that I'm using, and um, so I never got rid of any or whatever. I put them all back in, where in the past where I've had problems with things hanging or not starting or not working, it's just a bad mod, and you have to identify it and then, you know, either get a new version of it or or just not use it. Um, so, you know, in that process, I was, I was chatting with people, and, you know, they, they at least helped me out. But, yeah, I determined that it was probably me installing or, or inadvertently kind of activating that tree thing, even though I, I didn't think I was. So, um... But I have started, the, you know, I have run a couple flights with the trees and this and that and whatever. And But yeah, um, you know, I've talked about going ahead and, you know, that I've got, you know, I mean, I might be designing a golf course and PGA Tour. I, I kind of am curious tr to try my hand at that. Uh, I've got that new Trains with a Z that I had started using um, and really again I haven't touched that in well over a week and that's a subscription and so that's gnawing in the back of my head like you're paying for this but you're not using it um, you know so it's different than just out and out buying it but I am starting to see uh, some challenges there that uh, I may need to upgrade to the higher one to really do anything because I thought there were some routes I could play in the base and there aren't so really short of designing something, um, I've pretty much done what I can do. There's just one route available out of the box. And I think the next step up, pretty much anything in downloaded content, you know, which would include up uh, all the routes people have created and so forth are available to me. And then I could just run routes, how, whatever I wanted and so forth. But, um, but I was talking about that, but the other thing I, I realized recently is, you know, I've been trying to uh, make a modification to uh, GSX, which is the system in Microsoft Flight Simulator that uh, handles all the ground services. Um, so it'll do the baggage loading and pushback and uh, fueling and catering and, and so forth. Um, and so you can, within that software, it lets you edit files to basically make it work completely a as accurately as you can within an airport. But it requires you editing where the equipment's positioned at every gate and the taxi, or, or, or I'm sorry, the pushback routes. So, for example, if you think of any airport, you usually have gates that are really kind of close to the whole terminal section. So I'm, I'm doing it in O'Hare um, because that in one of my VAs is my home hub and uh, you know it's also kind of an airport I grew up with and so forth. Uh, you know we were th within the flight path of that when I was a kid and so I, I, I got um, a scenery update for that. Uh, kind of one of the, the better ones that everyone's rated in the, in the community. And so I'm editing that, but there are, I think, 150 parking spots or something in O'Hare uh, with all the GA aircraft and so forth. And that's the thing, you know, maybe with the GA aircraft, I don't do a lot of editing, 
but even without that I think there's you know 70 gates or something that are off the main terminals and so I, I started that project a long time ago months and months ago because uh, you can share those profiles out in the community, but nobody's done one for O'Hare that's out there. And I think uh, part of the reason is, again, just the sheer uh, volume of how many gates you have to do. So um, I, I have that on my list, and actually that's one of the things I want to spend some time on today is getting further along on that. Uh, but it's not uncommon that it takes like 15 minutes per gate or something to really get everything done is kind of what I think I was estimating at one point. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that will take my time. And that's kind of been the point of, once again, it's just, you know, I'm trying to keep track of things in Farming Simulator to not let, to not ruin things. Um, but because there's nothing I specifically need to be doing, you know, and, and there is Giants Editor and, and you could do things, but I've, I've dabbled very briefly in that um, and just found it requires more than what I'm capable of doing right now. Now, some of what I need to learn for, uh, say, trains, because, um, you know, any assets or just uh, recoloring any, you've got to work in like a 3D tool. So I'm also trying to learn Blender uh, enough, and so there's a journey there. Um, you know, and I, and I enjoy those type of things. I mean, so they're sim related in that I'm, I'm doing things within the sim, and I enjoy contributing to the community. Like in Tower Simulator, I've put several real schedules out into the community that, that people are able to enjoy now and and so forth. Um, so definitely, you know, doing content creation for various sims is certainly something that, that I also enjoy spending time doing, but for the most part, there you know, there's not video there to share on the channel. I mean depends I guess because there is one gentleman that I'm using that um, you know they did they, they basically are posting the live streams they're doing but they basically do a live stream twice a week and these live streams tend to be three hours long and they're up to almost 300 of them so 900 hours of um, building one route in trains so that just gives you an idea of <laughs> what you can get into. Um, again, I don't know, like I, you know, the, the, they have released this out into the community, um, you know, and it's it's kind of a more premium one. So I think they charge like thirty dollars for it if you were to buy it. But I think those are the type of things, for example, that you get access to with the higher level subscription that you can just use and. And yes, the difference would be obviously once I'm not paying the subscription, I no longer have access to that route if I didn't purchase it. But uh, the benefit that I think I get is I would be able to know, like, I like these four routes um, as opposed to uh, the Dovetail train simulator that, that I use that I just have to go by the description and obviously, again, I can look for reviews or, or something but there's just so many out there after the the uh, time it's been in the marketplace that um, it's just hard to flesh things out so so those are the things that I'm looking at you know and eventually maybe it'll turn into something but I I honestly have much less desire to do something in farming simulator for exactly the point that I talked about um, of them just changing versions every three years like to me putting in that effort to build something and then have to redo it and redo it and redo it and update it is just it's foolhardy where like trains um, while they have had updates to the product um, the old routes still work and, and all of that. Uh, they basically are just kind of growing the system and enhancing the capability, but the, you, you know, you don't have to use all the new features 
and your old routes will work. So they're technically on Train Simulator 22. Um, train Simulator 19 was the one before it, so it's a similar three-year cycle to, uh, at least at this point, to what, um, um, you know, Giants is doing with Farming Simulator, but uh, the difference is the, the mods, if you want to call it that, keep working. So, um, you know, and that's the thing, like, if giants could do that, that would be great. But they can't seem to crack that nut, or don't want to crack that nut, or whatever. So, um, and PGA, I mean, you could make the argument, like, PGA Tour updates even more often than that, and I don't think the courses really move as easily. I'm not sure, um, I, or as sure on that, but once again, it, it seems like it's not some insane amount of time, like 900 hours in trains, potentially, if you were really going all out like that individual is. But, um, you know, I, I, the best teacher, I suppose, uh, that, that, that I've come across, because there is a gentleman who's got a series who is an actual gol golf course... Uh, I don't know that he's a designer in real life, but I think he does something along that vein. I don't remember. It's been a week or so since I've looked at his stuff. But I came upon him, and, and I like his style of walking you through things. And so he's got a series of, I don't know, 13 to 15 episodes of basically going through golf course design. And I'm trying to recreate at this point um, uh, a real-world course that, that I'm familiar with, uh, just because I have driven by it a lot, and, um, you know, it's a local country club, and they've actually got two courses on it, so, you know, maybe I'll do both, but, um, you know, I just, that's what I've selected, is, hey, I'm going to try this, so, where his process is, hey, find a piece of land, and then kind of, you know, do something like it, so he looked around, you know, he did use Google Earth, look around, but, it was just more for inspiration, and then, um, you know, he could say, hey, this course is in this area, like I put it in this valley in North Carolina, I think is what he was looking at, and, um, you know, and, and in his mind, as he said, like, because he does it for a living, he's like, you know, you can look at a piece of real estate and see the golf course in your mind's eye, like, yep, I could see a hole going up the hill here and this going there and whatever. And so he walks through that. But in that process, he's talked about that for him, it's not abnormal that he basically takes about two hours per hole. Um, you know, so for a whole course, you're, you're still talking about 36 hours of time. Um, you know, and, and I assume if you're doing things kind of in the surrounding area and whatever, like that would add to that. I, I'm assuming that two hours per hole doesn't include all the external work you would do. Um, you know, like in my case, the course is in the middle of a bunch of houses. Um, so, you know, I'd also have to be placing houses and, and this and that around and, and building out some neighborhoods so that everything around the edge of the, of the property didn't just look empty. But we'll see, because, um, you know, a lot of the courses TGC uses, you know, they're not necessarily that fleshed out and so forth. But, um, but yes, yeah, so PGA Tour updates every couple of years, but because it's, it's just that amount of effort, it's like um, I'm, I'm willing to perhaps entertain it. You know, and, th and the point is with any of them, I may try this, start going down this path and be like, I'd rather just be playing PGA Tour, and I'd rather just be doing whatever. But right now, the uh, the itch that I need to scratch is is trying to get that profile done for O'Hare. And again, I may may make a good dent in it and still not get done. Um, it is kind of daunting. There's a lot. Um, I thought I was further along. I kind of spent some time last night trying to get my bearings and figure out where I was. Um, and where I had stopped, and so I basically got to the point where, yes, I 
I can see where I've got more gates that need work than don't, um, which is over in Concourse F, you know, and I started, you know, as you might expect with, with B, so I've done like B, C, E, uh, there isn't a, a D that I think exists in O'Hare, I don't remember, but that's kind of what I remember last night, so basically F is the fourth uh, major terminal that that is uh, to be worked and I'm you know probably halfway done with that one was was about where I was at I did I probably finished uh, you know the the equipment was already placed so all I had to do was play with the pushback um, and adjust those paths and so forth and they were relatively straightforward so I probably did five or six of those gates in 20 minutes um, and, and got those finished up and so my hope is that I had placed the equipment on all the F gates and that all I've got to do is do that and then I can have F wrapped up quickly. But then, um, you know, I think it goes through K or L and I'm not sure, again, if there are breaks in between that or not. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of those gates and then, you know, then it's a matter of seeing what else needs some work beyond that. I mean, I still am going to look at everything, and that obviously still is going to take some base time, but there's parking spots all over the place for general aviation aircraft, and in some cases, you know, it. I've got to look at it with a view of, all right, what if I had like a, a corporate jet here, um, you know, where maybe a, a little Cessna 152 or 172 can pull out on its own without any kind of pushback. Uh, regardless of how things are parked, uh, uh, a jet might not be able to do that as easily uh, because, hey, it might have jet wash onto other planes and so forth. And so I might still need to do some pathing there, but then in theory you have less equipment, um, you know, because you're not necessarily, you're not going to need stairs, um, you're not going to need. Um, you know, a lot of things that, that you have, like the luggage, the baggage handling stuff doesn't, wouldn't exist out there and so forth. So, so that's the thing I'm going to try to focus on because otherwise it just will never get done. And I'd like to get that out to the community before uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 comes out. Uh, and in theory still lets us use the airport and so forth. And again, that's why I, I'm willing to invest that time because I think it'll bring enjoyment not just to me but potentially to other people for for uh, quite a while. So, um, so it's gotten us almost all the way through the fertilization. It's been nothing about Farming Simulator, really. Um, so if it is... Uh, if you don't enjoy the fact that I just talk about whatever um, when I decide to share on these things, like if you're like, hey, just keep the farming simulator content farming simulator related. I don't want to hear about what else you're doing. Um, I'm not interested in that stuff on the channel. Um, if somehow it's destroying your enjoyment of watching the fertilizer go up and down the field, drop me a comment. Let me know. Um, it's just, you know, I... I've had nobody say anything about it, so I feel it's okay. You know, the people are either just ignoring it and skipping over it, or the ones who want to listen to it are listening to it. So it's kind of the philosophy I've had on the channel for forever, which is it's out there. I work hard to provide chapter uh, divisions for pretty much every one of my series and so forth so that you can pick and choose what you listen to pretty easily. Um, and so, you know, I include in those chapters, like I will here, uh, you know, other sim discussion or something, because we did talk about all kinds of things, so I can't just say flight sim, even though that was the, the majority of it. Um, but if, if it's just all of you are irritated with it that watch these, like, let me know, and I can just try to hold that information uh, until I'm doing something in Flight Simulator, because I certainly have flight simulator series where um, you know we're, we're making 30 to an hour long, long videos at every time just because of the takeoff and landing time and I've got time to discuss so um, I could do it there 
and I still will do it there, but it just that's what's on my mind, and it's you know the the reason I'm here in August and didn't come right back in in June and fertilize. So uh, just that is where where it's relative. I think I'm not doing tangents that are totally out of left field. Um, like there's still a tie to farming simulator, and that I'm here in August because of everything I just shared with you for the last goodness 40 minutes that my recording has been going so yeah if you watch this kudos to you thank you um, thanks for caring enough to understand where my head's at and and what I'm working on and and thinking about but uh, yeah we're getting wrapped up now I mean now it feels like I should just get you to the end because why would I drop off with the last pass done and, and then go put it away the nice thing that we are seeing here, um, one spreader of 10,000 liters is going to be more than enough. I'm thinking I'm still going to have, I might still have 1,500 liters left by the time I get to the end here. But at this point, everything should be dark blue. Yep. So I do have needs lime turned on, as you can see, So and it's not showing up. So. And that would make sense, because two of my fields were just limed, but uh, this one I don't know what cycle it's on. So, uh, But usually it won't get triggered until after harvest. So once we harvest, which will obviously be the next thing that happens in a couple days, because I can, well, it could actually happen tomorrow, because I can actually, uh, cotton can be harvested in September. So it's September, October, November, December. We've got four months that we can harvest it in. Um, speaking of, I guess, ending with some farming simulator related comments, um, compared to uh, Shellbrook and, and the other things that I was on in FSN, um, I haven't had a harvest that's been impacted by rain amazingly now that I think on it um, I think one time I had to stop and then come back a couple hours later but like I used to have things on Shellbrook and I, I'm trying to remember I don't even remember the map I was on forever um, I think I called it you know Misty Hills or Misty whatever Misty Hollow um, I don't know doesn't matter. You can go back and look at the old FSN content if you're really interested. Um, but I remember there were entire days, like, oh, it's harvest day, and I go in, and it's raining, and I look at the forecast, and it's raining for the next eight hours, and I basically had to, you know, there was actually one time I think the harvest got rained out, and, I, like, I couldn't get the crop off the field uh, because I couldn't get into the server any time that it wasn't raining that's never happened here and at this point I'm I don't know 15 16 seasons I have stopped doing my spreadsheet tracking uh, because at this point this farm has become so repetitive uh, as compared to other things I've done where I was like playing with crops but like I, I know what I want to do and I know what what works for uh, for me um, you know, I, I had established through enough years that, all right, I understand the cost of what cotton is costing me and so forth, and I can basically get a good profit per acre and, and know. And so um, rather than have that added administrative work, I'm not doing that. But that's one thing I remember. Like in this long of a cycle where we're going on nearly two decades um, to have no harvest even delayed significantly by rain, let alone washed out, um, is unheard of in my farming simulator experience in, in, in multiplayer worlds like this. Um, now the one thing I've looked at, oh yes, I was also going to see, so let me deactivate this because we have everything done with the cotton so the good news is by august it processed so i have room for more cotton the question is can i tell and i don't think i can 
because yes, I think the production costs are always the same um, as long as they're running. So um, even though I'm not doing anything, you know, and that's the benefit, I think if I deactivate it, I don't think I have the same cost per day. Maybe I do. Um, I, I really, that's something I need to try to discern. And um, so I don't know when it finished, but I know it finished sometime between April and August. Um, and again, I think I checked on the day I started planting on the morning of May, and it had, had done like maybe 20,000 or something uh, in the 12 hours. So it seems to be doing like maybe 40,000 a day or something. So I'm just kind of going to get have to get a little closer because, again, my target here is maybe adding field 38 into the mix um, and potentially even 34 if I really want to push things. But I'm just not sure. Uh, what I don't want to do is, is outpace, have, have my um, crop outpace my ability to process it over the course of a, a game year. So, but right now, we know... We'd, we'd still have August, September, um, you know, at, at, at a minimum, like I have two months that I could still process, and um, it's probably more than that, but um, I don't know. I'll have to pay a little more attention, but right now, like, I know I can add. Um, you know, the, the challenge will be, like, you add something like 38, and suddenly it's like, well three quarters of the field I can do, but then the extra quarter field is, is giving me too much or something. Um, you know, I guess we'll worry about it then, but right now, I'll, you know, when I make the decision, at least I have the, the data point in my head that, yes, my spinnery was not running, and once again, I, I did harvest uh, late this year, so or, or last year. I think I didn't get to it till October, um, and... Therefore, um, you know, I probably really have three months of runway that I could could go ahead and, and have things run. So I think I'm in good shape because if it's running 40,000, I mean, I'm probably going to get closer to 140, 160,000 off field 38 with the size that it is. Um, but I think there there's probably enough space to absorb that. But that may be it. I think after that I'm going to probably have a month or something if I have any clearance and, you know, maybe two, and I think 34 is bigger than that, so we may not expand that far. But that is where we're at at this point. Um, again, if you followed along through this segment, thank you very much. Um, and as always, give me some comments. Uh, I always love to chat with the community and just... Uh, have some interaction and we're, we're just not large enough yet that that happens with any frequency so that's kind of my holy grail for the channel is to get to the point where I'm just uh, maybe not inundated but that I have a consistent set of real discussions going on um, I mean I appreciate every comment I get so even if it's just hey good round and golf like I had uh, someone comment this morning you know um, I still respond and thank everybody. Uh, I, 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 as long as I see it, there's a possibility I'm not seeing a comment. So if I'm not responding to you, it's not because I don't like you. Because I'm sure you see, oh my God, he responds to everybody, but he just ignored me. Um, I'm not ignoring you. If I see the comment, I will a a acknowledge it. Um, so I enjoy that. But you know, I wouldn't call those discussions. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm thrilled that people are engaging and at least taking the time to do that. Um, but, but what I'd like is, is actual discussions about, hey, you know, I love this equipment. I mean, even if it's just, hey, I, I, you know, I love the tractor you're using. I use it on my farm, and then, you know, we can have a discussion. And we can do that in Discord or on comments. But anyway, um, I'm just dragging out something that's long, even longer. Because as you all know, if you followed the channel at all, I can talk and talk and talk and talk. So I am going to stop this segment here, and I'll see you in a bit. All right, back here in October. Cotton's here. Might have been here yesterday. I didn't get to look at it. So 
I think I got everything ready before. It looks like I did. So this field I tend to run up from that opposite corner uh, just because it tends to do better with the helper AI. So nice to see over 200,000. So money's been ticking up from those wonderful greenhouses there. They probably are going to need to have some water added. So that will be something that I go ahead and do as well. I know when I was in here uh, doing the fertilization in August, so two days ago, um, then uh, I think it was like 6,500, so it's probably getting dangerously close if not already done. So once I get these going, I'll worry about that, but let's get up here. So, yeah. Um, it's a big day for me in the sim world, I suppose. Um, it's my first official contribution, uh, I, I guess, as a content creator beyond YouTube. Um, you know, YouTube videos that everybody obviously is watching or whatever. But I got a profile from Microsoft Flight Simulator for an add-on called GSX, which um, basically lets you run all the ground services at an airport um, and the program lets you uh, create profiles a a as it's named it basically lets you place the equipment uh, lets you do the pushback for how the plane gets pushed back um, and I did that for a payware airport uh, that I use uh, because O'Hare uh, near and dear to my heart in a couple of reasons. Uh, I grew up in the flight path of O'Hare. I'm uh, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois in the U.S. And so um, airport's been part of my life since I can remember. Uh, used to travel a lot out of it as I lived there, got into my working career and so forth. Uh, so it's just one I'm familiar with and obviously it's one of the iconic airports in the world, I, th I think still. I don't know, maybe my nostalgia is letting me get the better of me. I mean, I know it hasn't held the world's busiest airport title in probably decades. It might even be with an S. Um, but I swear, even into the 1990s, it was the world's busiest airport. I think Atlanta Hartsfield now has owned that title for quite some time. But either way, uh, you know, people know it. It's it's a major hub uh, for place the co companies like United and so forth. And so, in a virtual airline, United, uh, that is my hub. Um, and so, based on that, I had this payware airport that I purchased um, and created the profile. And it was it was a labor of of love to some degree, but just uh, one of those things that I do in the world is, you know, kind of, um, I'm, I'm pretty determined, like, hey, I get, I'm going to try something, I'm going to see it through. Um, I started it months ago. Um, I want to say I was working on it in, in March. This is now August. Um, just the first few days of August. So I was doing some work again on it in July, but basically it, it had been in my mind for a few weeks and uh, basically, after we came back from vacation, oh, I'm like, why is it slowing down? I'm like, is it losing the field line? But no, it's it's got to unload. I f knew it was really full when I started. I was like, cool, I'm going to get a bale really fast. Because um, the benefit here, I guess I should get the other one going, huh? But I was going to say the benefit here, while I'm all excited telling you that, which has nothing to do with Farming Simulator, but I do think a good amount of people, uh, it seems like I've got a few regular viewers at least that kind of watch across multiple sims just seeing what I've got. Um, but again, it's a sim channel, it's not a farming sim channel, so you could be here for anything and this is just kind of what you'll get. You'll get um, all kinds of sims from me and 
I'll talk about different things in, in different sim videos, just because it's what's happening, but that's why I'm here in October. Uh, similar to the explanation I was giving in August, I think I was talking about what I was doing there too um, when I was fertilizing and it took us through the whole fields. I, I won't go into that too much here, but uh, anyway, if you are a flight simmer and you are looking for that, I'm certainly going to talk about it more in my flight sim videos, especially if I'm leaving that airport because then I get to use the work I did, but... Um, But if you are a flight simmer or interested, it's out on flightsim.to, which is, I think, one of the more popular places for content to go. And um, I think you can just find it if you do GSX Pro Profiles, FSDT. FSDT is the company that makes the airport, payware airport, FSDT, K-O-R-D. Um, and that should help you find it. So, somehow, on this this video, you hear about it, and you're looking for it, and you can't find it. I, you know, drop it in the comments. If I see it, I'll help you find it, if you can't. So, but the benefit, um, as I was going to say, is I can get the spinnery going. So, let me do that. We'll go and get this. And even though it's only one bale... Ooh, we've got two pallets out. Look at that. So, that's nice. I think we're really close to a third pallet. I almost want to say I'm at like 19,000 or something, so I think a third pallet's going to come out pretty fast. At this point, since I backed up, I guess I'll turn sharply, but no, I'm just going to go grab this one bale. Because, again, part of what we're trying to determine is when do uh, things stop. Man, the lag. Oh, thank goodness. All right, well, let's make sure he gets through here. Because this is... Ah, shoot. He's not... Well, maybe he will. Let's see. This is crazy. I think the only way to fix this field is to just fully... I think I just ran those over. Oh, lovely. And it's turning around now. Alright, so let me, let me go. Um, I, I thought I didn't need to, um, let's see. I'm probably gonna kill some of these now, which sucks, but oh well. Um, So, I should have learned my lesson. Um, if I start and go this way, I think it works a little bit better because, like, it sees those rows and it does its thing. So if I go across instead of up and down. But, yeah, like I said, I just don't know how to fix that. But, um... But, no, I'm trying to figure out, like, how long it takes for my spinnery to run um, everything I can get off these fields so that I know when I get to the point that I can afford more land if I can do that. All right, that should work pretty well. So I guess it's good that I came up here when I did because otherwise, because what I've seen sometimes is then it, it like stops at that level the whole time and then you have like this whole giant end of the field that has to be done and it, it takes several minutes for it to get to that point so um, but to figure out how long it takes like I obviously need the spinnery to be spinning so I need to get it loaded as quickly as possible and you know, within, say, 15 minutes of starting the harvest, this is actually probably as quick as I'm ever going to have happen. So, this will really test the limits, assuming I get in here fast enough later to put more in, because I don't think this 20,000... Somehow I was thinking I get through, like, 40,000 liters in a, in a game day. I'm not 
quite sure. I mean, it, it, it'd be a real day, too, now that I think about it, because these servers do run in, in real time. All right. But yeah, just two harvesters right now. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to stick with that. Like, we'll see if I get some sort of a bug that, like, wow, it would just be nice to just have a third one and ignore it. But again, given, like, that I have something else to, sp to work towards spending money on, um, I don't know that that makes a lot of sense at this point to spend 500000 I I am, in the back of my mind, slightly intrigued about do I ultimately, at some point, upgrade myself to the round bale harvesters? I don't know. Um, you can pick up a lot more with them, so there is that benefit, but, um, but obviously it's like a million dollars per harvester, so it's a little nuts, where, you know, they're, they're basically almost double the harvester. They're not quite, but, all right, so I know I can turn that off, because I don't want to burn any more fuel than I need to. We'll get this one picked up. Now we'll get us going. But yeah, um, you know, I, I guess closing off the, the flight sim thing, it's a big deal for me. Like, it's a big day in the fact I've... Whoops. Happens every once in a while. Um, I've never uh, done anything like that in any of the sims, really. I mean, I've... I've put material out or spreadsheets out or something that I've put on videos here, uh, but kind of an official, hey, I've created a mod or content, I've not done that. You know, I've, I've, like, the mod that I've changed the VIP order manager, like, I can't really post that. It's just I made changes to someone else's creation, so I'm not going to be doing that because um, that's not really my own content. All right, now I think, again, I had turned this off, so I do have to turn it back on. I think I did that once. I think I loaded it and forgot that I had turned it off. Uh, and then let's look at the water. Yeah. So I'm going to go do that, and then at least I can be doing something while, while we're chatting instead of just chatting. All right. It's interesting that when it's doing that stuff with AI, like it doesn't, um, like it didn't override the, the items there, but there was no way to get out of the field. I suppose I could have waited until it moved a little bit. I don't know. It's done now. Who knows? I mean, if anything, I, I killed plants that we're already picked, I think. I don't think it's like it damaged anything perceptibly. Yeah, because I still have liquid fertilizer in my big, big tank. Because ultimately, if I can empty that and, and then obviously only get what I can fit in the silo so that my big liquid tanker is done, I think I could fill all of these greenhouses with one one fill of that tank. Um, so anyway, let me back this up. Whoops. Because I can start filling this warehouse. That's always the easy one. Because then once it goes down a little bit, I can start hitting the button to refill. And so it's filling the tank at the same time it's emptying. So it ends up doing a pretty good job of filling this greenhouse up. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's an exciting day. I thought, I honestly thought I was going to be done two days ago, but then I wanted to double check things and that added another four or five hours of work, you know, to get me certainly well over the 40 with everything in total. 
Um, and it was good that I went around and checked again. Part of it was when I started doing the cargo ramps, I realized, you know, I know that you can place at the passenger gates uh, things that load cargo containers, and sometimes on the really big planes, um, they'll load the baggage that way instead of just individual bags. Um, so, is this one full already? That seems unlikely, but no, it is. Wow, okay. Usually it empties, and then I have to, like, make sure it keeps refilling, and then dump some more again. But it, it filled up. So it has the 20,000 liters. Um, but yeah, so what I was saying with that mod is... Um, you know, so I, I had to go back to all the passenger gates, which are probably 150 or more. Um, but then in that process, I still saw, like, things that I hadn't done that I thought I had done. And some of it was just, this was the first time I've tried to do this, and so I was learning how to do it as I went. And so certainly the first sets of gates, like, I hadn't even positioned the plane correctly, but I kind of figured that out later. in my work and so forth and so I think the whole BNC concourse at, at O'Hare was done with wrong plane placements so that would have been not as well received so I'm I'm hopeful uh, in less than an hour I've already had like eight downloads um, so it's just intriguing to see how that works another one of those examples of the process Kind of just like uh, what how I got into YouTube, you know. I was like, I'm curious what it's like to set up a YouTube channel and submit some videos, and then it turned into what what you see in front of you in the in the Mature Simmer channel. And uh, again, enjoy that. Enjoy sharing with folks and talking with folks and so forth. So. But in any event, we are running, we are going as of early October. Cotton is running. I'm going to try probably to check in a couple hours when these two fields should be done. You know, and the thing is, like, if I if I get 100,000 liters into the spinnery, everything will be good. Uh, beyond that, you know, who knows. But I also have to move the harvester at some point. And I never got to the point where I moved. Actually, no, that's not true. I did have both harvesters working on that field at one point, but that almost requires me to be available and on, where otherwise I can just kind of let them go and uh, work with it later. But so that's what I'm going to do is step away for a bit. Uh, obviously, once I load these other greenhouses, but uh, I'm going to get that work done, and then our next stuff for this year should be the harvest. Um, so that is likely when you'll see me next. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I am popping in here uh, to share a public service announcement for Farming Simulator because I learned a very painful lesson today, which... <laughs> Honestly, really sucks. So I'm here, uh, as you can see, buying two um, Jerry cans of fuel because both my harvesters are uh, out of gas. And more importantly, we're going to get this on, we're going to strap this down, and we're going to run this over. Um, you can look at my money. To buy these jerry cans, I had to take out a loan. And you'll be like, but wait, you had $200,000. And you know what? You'd be right. But what happened is my two harvesters met on the field. Um, my wife and I have been out at an event for the last eight hours. So the harvesters weren't done, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll just uh, let them do their thing. And uh, I'll just deal with it when I get home. So we got home. 
And as you can see, it's pretty late at night. And I was like, all right, I, I'm not going to move things unless, you know, my spinnery is low. I, I honestly didn't even realize the money situation until I went to buy the jerry cans. Um, you know, I saw what happened. Oh, great, I'm out. Um, and whatever. And then was just go get those. They'll be 50 bucks. And then I went to spend buy my $25 jerry can and it's like you don't have enough money and it was then and only then that I saw that my balance was zero and then I went and looked and yeah so once I get to the field and fill these up uh, we'll work through what we need to work through and uh, we'll talk through the disaster that this became so that you can learn from my misfortune. <laughs> so the short answer is uh, don't leave your AI running, uh, especially with two things on the field that could meet like these did. Which again, I knew they would, and it, I just didn't realize what the implications were. So let me unstrap those and let's go get these. Um, I should be able to grab it from the ground. Well, all right, well I'm up here now. So what? What is that? Pick it up, move it over. Oh my God! All right. This is way more involved than it should be. I deserve all this for for what happened, so I'm not going to complain too much because it's my own problem. So there we go. We're going to put that there, and then we're going to grab this swaying little thing, and we're going to put that next to this, and then hopefully it should be okay. So, um... I don't know. I don't know which one. Let's see. Let's get in. We'll figure out. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to finish this one. So I'm going to take this one out of the way first. So this one should be allowed to fill up. There we go. So basically what they do is they run into each other and they just keep running. So you can see also, like, the repair is down. So, like, this is not just going to cost me what it did already. And again, like, in case you're unclear, uh, I, I, I get I haven't gone and showed you this. I'm just going to fill this up. Um, and at this point, I'll probably just leave these because it's not like I need them right now. Um... You know, I can finish the one little partial row again. But I think I have enough fuel in these to, to fill these up. So not only do I have all that fuel... Look at my wage payment. $202,093. I'm literally going to have, like, one field of fabric to pay the wage payment for this debacle. And then I don't even want to know, like if I go here now, look at that, $35,000. And they're both gonna be that way because not only did they run and run out of fuel, they then wore themselves out running and idling facing each other. So I have $70,000 of repair. Again, not all of which came from that one thing, but I mean, the repair was like 20% when I took those things over to the field. So maybe they would have gotten to 30%. Why am I running over here? Because I'm continuing to be stupid and irritating. Uh, all right, let me... I haven't refueled it yet. Okay. Let me start the engine. 
and then we'll quickly grab this. And then we'll just grab that other row there. Whatever little bit it is. We'll pick this up. We'll go get fuel. And at least the repair on this isn't quite as bad. Oh my god. So, so yeah, this was a $270,000, $250,000 learning experience. So yeah, I'm like, cool, I paid off my loans, I, whatever. And again, I, I have a $5,000 loan, and obviously I have $4,949 of it. But it, it's still money. It just, I, I could not believe what I was seeing. I mean, it was bad enough I had to go get the fuel, but to add insult to injury, I then have that too. So, um, again, learn from my misfortune. Uh, not the greatest thing in the world, but basically uh, stop your AI and deal with it later. Uh, it's just I wanted to get the harvest done today, and I couldn't get it done before we left. So I'm like, it's close. And honestly, probably if I had checked, but I was trying to get a video up and, and get it ready for editing. And I literally, we kind of left probably a minute or two later than we would have liked. I mean, it worked out fine. We met the people we were meeting on time and whatever. But again, my wife was like, we're late. And again, telling her we're late because I'm doing something for my Sims usually doesn't go over very well because she's not as into simming as I am. Uh, as in, she doesn't do it at all. And she just thinks it's funny, but she indulges in my my passion for my hobby. And, and, you know, normally it's fine, but if it starts to interfere with, like, things we're trying to do in real life, it, it kind of impacts things. So, um, obviously I don't want to play that card too often. So I was like, you know, because I, I was trying to get the last farming simulator video together is what I was working on. And, um, and that was the situation. So, uh, let's see. I assume I can just let it go do its thing. Will it run straight? Yes, it will. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll let it do it. I just don't want to drive it. <laughs> At this point, what's another few hundred dollars to get to the end of the field? But at least I have um, everything. So yeah, I think when I last looked, like maybe there was a third of the field in total left. Um, you know, obviously the one harvester was coming from the other side. The other one was coming. And I think during the editing, because uh, it probably took me 30 minutes to edit, they had probably met and they were sitting there already. So if I had had time to look or thought to look before I left, because honestly, I, when I got home, I'm like, oh, farming simulator's running. Because I knew I had been rendering. I set the videos up to render before we left. And then I'm like, okay, before I, I go to bed, um, I need to at least upload them. And that way they'll be there in the morning. And... Um, you know, and when I'm ready to post them, we'll be fine. Because the other thing is, I want I need to get a truck simulator video done, um, so that will be on my agenda in the morning. Because I was debating, I'm like, well, maybe I'll run the, you know, I'll record it tonight, and then I'll do the editing in the morning. No, I'm not going to stay up and record it tonight now, because I've spent the time <laughs> doing stuff in Farming Simulator. So, anyway. 10 minute explanation of the disaster that happened um, if you stuck with me thanks and uh, yeah that's it so at this point then I'll see you when it's time to uh, probably sell this fabric at the end because you know now I'm just uh, going to put it in I guess the update I'll give you um, of the 60,000 liters I put in there we were down to like 37,000 left um, so I went ahead, I had another 40,000 that I had moved over, two bales were there. I put those in when I got here tonight before I went and dealt with the harvesters. And then I'm like, well, I need to share this with you in recording. But at this point I have basically 77,000 liters in there. So, um, it'll definitely run till the morning. 
or probably even longer, and then maybe tomorrow night or something I'll pick up these bales, and one thing I haven't checked, let me look, is does this field need lime? Because again, I don't know when that cycle will be. I does not, thank goodness. I don't know that I want to deal with that this off season. So um, it had grass in it, so it's possible grass really wasn't using the lime. Because it's not like you have to relime a glass, relime a grass field. You may not need to relime a glass field either. But um, in any way, in any event. That's the situation, so I'll just, uh, to avoid making it really long, because the other ones, like last year, the last year's an hour and 20 minutes because of all my discussion about flight sim and, and all the other stuff I added in, um, trying to not make it super crazy, so I'm going to stop and then not worry about showing you picking up the bales, because, you know, that's the situation I'll be doing, and, um, we know again that it won't be done with everything by April, but I'm going to try then in the following year to pay a little more attention to see when the production stops. So that again, as we get closer, but now we'll be $270,000 in the hole, um, which is really kind of irritating because basically what we sold, we sold our whole crop for like 410000 so it basically. I mean, for all intents and purposes, what it means is I made no profit this year. Because between the supplies and then the wage payment that it would have been, um, it, it probably would have been nothing. So really, I guess only the supplies are on top, so I'll make a little bit of profit. But I'm probably going to make like under $100,000. It's probably going to be like forty or 50000 is all I'll have. Uh, between the 270 that I need for repair and and that and then adding probably 30, 30 or 40,000 in supplies so so this year um, it's just a tough lesson but I will see you in a bit all right here late April as always it's fabric selling time we're just going to hobos right behind here loaded up the truck as you can see so we got a good amount um, so we'll see where we end up. Um, I did go ahead and uh, not sure if I was uh, sure that I had cleared up the uh, which I'm gonna call it. Let's okay, 220, and let's just take a peek. So there's still 90,000 liters left. So yeah, we have. A we just got half a pallet done, so nowhere near ready to pop any out. Not going to happen tonight. You know, if it was 500 away or something, maybe I'd wait. Wrong spot. It's over here, past the the uh, BGA and all of the storage stuff like that but I had paid off the loan so we were debt free I do think I covered that uh, so we've now made you know almost everything that we needed I'll just get this all the way in but it was 2622 when I looked at this it actually went up one even though it's pointing down but yeah, if it's over 2,600, that's always pretty good because, as uh, you can see, you know, 2,536 is in theory kind of where it would be normally. But 581, um, 985, not bad. So again, not anywhere near where we need it to get anything that might be next on the list if we want to even consider land or anything like that but it's a good amount of cash and as long as I don't do stupid harvester problems again um, and have it depleted to nothing um, I should be in in decent shape but that you know lets us know at this point we can make uh, over 
half a million dollars so we'll just be disconnected so that we can connect up uh, I did go take a look yeah it looks like we're okay no lime for next year everything's clean so my big issue is again do I have a year I can work or not so taking a look at the calendar it does look like I will be okay but there is a possibility um, I could potentially have a problem. I probably really need to focus on getting the crop in the ground tomorrow so that I have a shot at the crop being ready in September because that might help. It's just whether I can actually harvest uh, then in real life or not. Uh, but October is the day before uh, we're going to be heading out of town for a bit, but then once I harvest and I get everything in to the spinnery like the spinnery can keep running and we've again shown clearly that it will run all the way up to including April and we'll be back um, in April so should be okay and even if you know it waited till May or I could wait a couple years like again there's nothing that I'm looking to buy and at this point with nearly 600,000 in there uh, that gives me plenty for if I need to replenish any supplies or anything. So that does wrap up the year. And, um, you know, we're uh, continuing to move forward, just seeing where things are going to lay out. But moving forward here at Farmers Only Club, and the uh, year is done. So that gives us what we need to wrap things up. As always, if you've not dropped a like or are not a subscriber, please consider those things. And I will see you next time.